with me, uh, my guest, Dr. Jennifer Leaf. And I'm going to allow, well, first, welcome to Zero Today Show. Yeah, let me go back to do that. I usually do a long intro, but I'm not doing a long intro. We'll get straight to the point. Um, Dr. Leaf, I want you to tell my audience a little bit about yourself, what you do, and um, yeah, all of that stuff. Great. Thank you so much, Dr. Neal. Uh, so good to be with you and, and to join you on your show. Um, I am uh, um, the pastor of Campbell Chapel AME Church in Denver, Colorado, uh, where I've served uh, for the past uh, five going on six years. And, um, and I am the assistant professor of religion and social justice at Iliff School of Theology, uh, also in Denver, Colorado, and, um, and have been uh, at Iliff for the past six years. And so um, uh, I have, have also been working for a long time uh, on uh, on studying and researching and writing about black sexual ethics. Um, and this is um, a, a passion for, for various reasons. Uh, for the past 20 years, really, uh, it's been something that I've been interested uh, in because I have seen um, growing up in the AME church, the ways that sexuality um, complicates faithfulness and um, and that broadly speaking um, also as a um, as a queer woman um, a black queer woman um, I I have um, I have been uh, concerned uh, about what it is to have felt the call and the affirmation of God, the love of God, uh, but to know that I uh, am called to a community that has not yet discerned a place of universal affirmation or commitment uh, or um, uh, support for LGBTQ folks like me. And, um, and this is, um, this is, uh, a, a deep concern and painful um, uh, for me, but also um, for many. And um, and I believe that God has uh, given a an impo important opportunity in this moment to begin dialogue that we have not been able to have uh, prior to this point um, within the AME Church regarding sexuality, not just LGBTQ. Uh, sexualities, if you will, but uh, but sexuality more broadly, and uh, what it means for us to live um, faithfully and to live um, lives that glorify God, uh, not only um, uh, in terms of um, our prayer lives, our scripture reading lives, our church attendance lives, but um, our uh, our lives in relationship and intimate relationship with one another. Wonderfully said. And um, again, you, you got the credentials to back it all up. <laughs> so the reason we're having the discussion, um, we're both pastor and a, in the AME Church, for those of you in my audience who don't know what the AME Church is by any chance, you haven't heard of us, the African Methodist Episcopal Church has been around since 1787, founded by Richard Allen as a open act of, um, of, of justice against discrimination by leading the charge out of St. Uh, George's Church and establishing the Free African Society, leading to the African Methodist Episcopal Church and the great liberating service that the church has done over the last 200 plus years. We both serve in that great communion and uh, we recently just came out of our 51st quadrennial and um, which leads us to the discussion because we've become a hot topic. Uh, <laughs> We're sort of the last of the great standing uh, mainline denominations that are reluctant to embrace. And I'm not even sure if that word embrace is the right language for it. But we're, we're slow in addressing the LGP plus community. I don't even know if I said that right. Um, and so we, we had an issue that kind of came up during our general conference that draw that drew national attention and um 
I, I want you to expound on exactly what it is, because a lot of people just, the headline wrote AMEs uh, and gays or something to that nature, or homosexual, I can't remember. It's a whole lot of them. But basically, the headline was like, we said no, which is not true, but it's, it's inaccurate. So I want, if you don't mind, just to, to provide clarity exactly to what legislation it was that brought such contentious and the results of the elections um, and what we can be looking forward to as a church in the, at least the next three years. Mm -hmm. Yes, so um, there was a bill presented um, and uh, so it was submitted um, in the package of legislation, JA05 which was written by a member of um, uh, an AME church in the Second Episcopal District, uh, a brother by the name of Ravi Perry, wrote this piece of legislation. And um, this legislation, the intent of it, simply put, was to remove uh, language prohibiting same-sex marriage in the doctrine and discipline of the AME church. Now, um, that passage that he intended to delete is the only passage in our doctrine and discipline that addresses right. homosexuality uh, or LGBTQ identity in any way, shape, or form. Um, that legislation, uh, the legislation that um, that. Uh, or, or, or rather the um, motion, it wasn't even legislation, it was a motion uh, that, that put that language into the discipline, uh, was um, handled uh, in a way that did not really permit much debate or discussion uh, in 2004. And now in 2021, this was an echo of that kind of procedure where this bill... Um, was uh, handled with um, uh, great uh, intention, if you will, yes. <laughs> to make sure that yes. it would not be discussed or debated, but that it would simply and quickly be, be um, uh, rejected, deleted, and uh, swept under the under the rug. Um, the, the bill, it was not, uh, it was not written quite the way I would have written it. <laughs> um, <Yes>. Likewise. <laughs> it was, it was, um, uh, I, I think um, it, it was, the, the tone of it was for um, an, another community. <laughs> um, it, it didn't quite get to where we are as a people. Um, my hope uh, when the legislation came forward was to offer an amendment, um, whereas the bill presented um, would have inserted new language that would have given um, clergy an option to yes. choose to perform or not to perform same-sex marriages, um, and also added other details of how clergy could choose to affirm or not affirm LGBTQ people in communities. Um, my amendment would have simply taken all of the language out because I think um, procedurally <laughs> there is a concern with putting prohibitions or permissions in the discipline without adequate um, discussion, uh, that there had not been a holy conferencing, to use the Methodist uh, yeah. framework, um, uh, or that there had not been a, a process of discussion or discernment, Make, made it in, uh, inappropriate that there was a passage in there to begin with, but also made it inappropriate to put something in substitution. <laughs> That yeah. that would um, that would offer a direction of affirmation that had not been de debated or deliberated uh, within and among the body, and so um, my amendment would have uh, would have done that, but uh, that that amendment did not have an opportunity, <laughs> did not have a chance, and there was someone else who also also offered a similar kind of amendment. Um, also, uh, that was uh, shut down. <laughs> and that brings me to a concern about our procedure. Um, if you're fighting for what's right, why do you have to fight dirty? 
Absolutely. <laughs> and, and, you know, and what I think people, the, the larger public, all they got was the headline. They didn't understand. A lot of them don't understand it. You know, we are very serious about parliamentary procedure mm-hmm. when it comes to the, the mission and the meetings of the church. And you have to be very, very shrewd sometimes when it comes to that. And it that's one of the challenges that I have being a part of this Zion, knowing that <laughs> that we can be shrewd at, at times. Right. And do more damage than than help. Yeah. Yeah. And and I think I mean what is interesting is there there was uh political shrewdness and there was um there was intentionality and planning that went into how um parliamentary procedure would be used to benefit um the mission of deleting this bill quickly however (laughs) um there were some major gaffes in the application of that procedure i think that any external parliamentarian reviewer would say that that was not procedurally proper, <laughs> that um, that there were errors in the handling of that, notwithstanding the um, the uh, the unfortunate way that uh, parliamentary procedure was used to um, shut down the conversation. And so um, I believe there's a better way. <laughs> I believe there's a better way toward um, toward understanding LGBTQ um, people in our community and perspectives of those of us who are uh, seeking to live faithful lives of discipleship of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I I think that there's a a better way to handle these matters procedurally as well. And um, and so uh, seeing this train wreck coming down, (laughs) uh, coming down the tracks, I um, I had begun to think about a resolution, um, uh, a resolution that might give us an opportunity to engage in dialogue regarding sexuality and maybe help us to a better place by 2024 or, um, or soon thereafter. And, uh, and so in this resolution, I presented um, a, a, an ad hoc committee um, entitled the, excuse me, titled the uh, sexual, uh, sexual ethics, <laughs> sexual ethics discernment committee, um, uh, shorthand said C and committee on uh, discernment. That's all we remember. Uh, yeah, that's right. Discernment. And, um, <laughs> um, and th- this, uh, I, I should say as a caveat, I, I don't want to uh, present myself as being more original than I am. Uh, I, I uh, was not privy to um, resolutions that came out before out of the Department of Research and um, and, and historiography, but I know that uh, our, um, our historiographer uh, had attempted some resolutions, although she had not presented them to the um, general conference. This, uh, to my knowledge, is the first such resolution presented to the general conference, and um, and and it was accepted. It was voted up by a little bit better margin than the um, the bill deletion was uh, voted. Um, uh, or, or, or rather, the bill was voted down. <laughs> um, well, yeah. well, you know, they still argued that it was voted disenfranchisement. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, so, <laughs> that's that's a whole other discussion in and of itself. But yeah, sure. And 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 we were uh, frustrated with um, with with those who could not vote uh, from um, from the continent. Uh, and from other parts in uh, in our Zion outside of the continental U- United States, um, uh, and and that was a, a harrowing process all the way through, um, and and also we we must acknowledge that the ways that conversation was limited and shut down, the ways that points of order were ignored, <laughs> um, was was not unique to the the continent. But there was kind of disenfranchisement that um, was consistent even for those of us who were in separate rooms, <laughs> um, in 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 the body. Uh, all that notwithstanding, um, you know, 
over 900 people um, voted for uh, this this resolution to go forward and um, uh, around 400 um, voted against that. Um, and um, I, I do I do receive this as a mandate. And as at the same time, uh, I recognize that um, a third of the body is a big is is a big number. <laughs> and so um, and so we've got a lot of work to do and it will be an uphill climb. Um, the 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 bottom line, though, of this committee um, is to help us with um, with five tasks. The first task is one of hermeneutics. How do we interpret scripture? How do we interpret? How do we interpret culture? Um, and uh, with this, when we talk about hermeneutics or interpretation, we are um, we are necessarily acknowledging that um, that this has not been standardized. Uh, this has not been consistent. That we all have different approaches to how we interpret. Uh, the second piece is specifically on scriptural texts that. Uh, refer to sexuality. Um, uh, how do we interpret these? <laughs> um, so the the first matter is a kind of meta ethical question, if you will. It's it's just how do we interpret, generally speaking. The second is how do we interpret these texts. Um, the the third element is hearing um, hearing the testimonials of LGBTQ people, some of whom have left the AME Church and some of whom are still in the AME Church. Um, but uh, but when these matters have come before the body, um, the only voices that we hear are voices that are condemning uh, in in official or formal um, uh, um, uh, forums, and 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 so um, it is it's it, it's it's a bullying behavior <laughs> to silence your opponent um, or uh, or to not give. Um, the other side a chance to even uh, stake their claim, <laughs> and um, and so this committee will uh, offer a, a a kind of protected space for LGBTQ people to say, hey, here's what we have experienced, here's what we've gone through, here's what it is like for us to believe in Jesus, to have our gifts acknowledged to an extent or used within the church, but uh, to not be affirmed in the fullness of who we are. Um, and then this, the, the fourth and the fifth um, objectives, if you will, of, of this committee are first to um, consider and, and, and to develop legislation that will help us with what I call uh, Jedi Soji <laughs> work. Um, Jedi, justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion with respect to sexual orientations and gender identities. If the Church of Allen is a church of justice, um, then in, in a church where um, uh, where we stand up for the most vulnerable, then uh, then indeed um, there ought to be uh, reflections of this um, with respect to um, people whose sexual orientations and gender identities have become the objects and targets of violence and discrimination as well. And then legislation um, uh, in, 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 in another form um, in terms of the missional work of the church. Um, uh, we we are by uh, by mission uh, the AME Church uh, that is called to minister to the needs of all people, and so um, and so we really must come um, come come to grips with what it means to minister to the needs of LGBTQ people, um, and to do that in ways that uh, don't um, attempt. Um, conversion therapies or praying the gay away uh, or other strategies that we have seen are harmful to the point of death and self-destruction, uh, but but really minister in ways that people can um, can see and receive and uh, love and be loved and, and, and strive and survive. <laughs> I, I appreciate it. That's a that's a lot to unpack. And I really appreciate how how well how much thought you put into crafting this resolution and the committee and how what we're going to address. One of the bishops um, brought up the issue that this is a doctrinal issue and not a legislative one. Um, traditionally, 
we aspire, we ascribe to the idea of uh, sexual orientation in the sense of man and woman. You know, uh, man marries a woman and all of that. Um, and you brought in the idea of interpreting scripture. Um, how, and this is just a little pushback, mm -hmm. how do we uh, deal with this? Because the conflict is what scripture says, what we should adhere to scripture, and then praxis of scripture. And that I think that's where the conflict comes in. But persons like myself who wrestle with this, we, we want to be welcoming, loving, and what matter of fact, not want to be, we are, you know, we are a church that's welcoming and affirming, not in the most strictest sense where we're going to plaster it on the billboard or anything like that. But when it comes to the, the, that, differentiation of praxis and interpretation of scripture. How, how, how do we approach that? Uh, before we get to the next conference where the legislation, the language of the legislation may be better. Mm. How, how do we do that? If that makes any, any sense. Yeah. So, um, th this is, this is an interesting question because I, I think, um, there was debate on the floor about the extent to which this is doctrinal. And, um, and that was thrown up as a kind of um, code word to say, well, if it's doctrinal, it's not something we can legislate. Right. Um, however, um, there, there, there's, there's something disingenuous about that. Uh, if, if it was doctrinal and it can't be legislated, then it could not have been put into the book in 2004. Exactly. Yeah. And I think every <laughs> one of us who knew that when we saw it going into the book in 2004, well, after when we saw it in the book, 2004, we, we knew, we, we, you know, we knew we were walking a very, Thin lie. Yeah. Now, um, and so, you know, you can't, you can't pull the doctrine card now. <laughs> uh, it's, 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 it, that is uh, disingenuous. And again, um, it's, it's not a fair fight. Uh, it, it, and it's not a, an honorable fight. And if it was, if, if you're fighting for justice, then you wouldn't need to fight that way. <laughs> if you're fighting for something that's right, um, then you can give uh, the other side their turn. <laughs> you can give the other side their chance um, because um, be because um, if if right is right, <laughs> then 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 right won't need um, dirty politics. But so should this, should this be framed and approached from a justice praxis or a doctrinal? Praxis is, and that's that's. I think that's the construct that your your the ad hoc committees want to attempt to have the dialogue here. Is that would I be correct in that? I think that's about right. I mean, I think the, the first thing is it is a justice matter, right? Because the the, the passage was added um, as a kind of pushback <laughs> um, to. Uh, what was perceived as an injustice, an, injust, uh, an injustice of the church being accused of being affirming, <laughs> right? Um, uh, I, I, I don't ascribe to that framing of justice, uh, but I do believe that those who, um, who insisted that this was something to be added, added it because of um, because there was an injustice, uh, an injustice of perception seen. And so I think that the first line is a line that has to do with justice. But I think a second line does have to do with, you know, really, how do we handle uh, doctrinal complexities? Doctrine does, um, uh, does warrant review at times. A belief or set of beliefs that are held or taught by a church have to come under reconsideration, consideration and reconsideration. You know, I, I mean, technically, uh, we believed that um, that you should have to come to love feast before you receive communion. Yeah, that was a belief. 
that was held or taught by the church. Which we just reaffirmed. <laughs> we just reaffirmed. <laughs> but but um, but that is but it was it was not rejected as a possibility that we could revise that on the basis of policy. Mm -hmm. or, or rather on the basis of justice, um, mm -hmm. ah, of, of doctrine, my goodness. <laughs> was, I, I know what you're saying. Polity doctrine was, is the same it, thing. For it, us. it was not rejected on that basis, on that ground. Um, and so, um, you know, um, we, um, we, I think, have a, an, important, um, an important job to do uh, in, in terms of also helping the church to think about what do we do when we must push back against um, beliefs that are held um, and, and taught by the church. Indeed, the church that we, uh, that we left from was a church that believed that it was okay to discriminate against black folks. The church that we left as, um, as, as, as those who departed St. George's uh, Methodist Episcopal Church were, were um, it was a church that, um, that where there was not one perspective on, um, on uh, the legitimacy of slavery. Uh, the fact of the matter is that when we read the Bible, um, um, we we are reading a text that has already been interpreted first. It's already been in, interpreted insofar as it is translated. Every translation is already an interpretation. Any Bible that has the word homosexuality in it um, is an interpretation uh, because the word homosexual, homosexual was not even used until um, the past couple hundred years. It wasn't even a term. <laughs> So, so this is a new interpretation and translation. Um, when when we see that, um, uh, and 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 so I think you know even as we have been critically minded with respect to slavery in the Bible, even as we have been critically minded with re respect to um, the treatment of women uh, and the, um, the potentials for ministry among women, um, even as we have, uh, been critical in reading, um, uh, as, 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 as we have thought about, um, e uh, food, pro food prohibitions mm -hmm. <laughs> or, um, clothing prohibitions. So too, um, we, um, th there is, there's no good reason. There's no great justification, um, uh, for uh, for why we have um, why we have done what we have done with respect to sexuality and uh, homosexualities in particular. So you know, this is always going to be a contentious issue for the conservative parties in the church versus the progressive parties in the church. I'm somewhat a moderate, if I could say. I'm affirming in the sense that you know, as being a part of this church. We welcome all, and we expect all to uh, have the love of Christ and the service of others as they come a part of this community. Um, the conflict is, and I think this is the perception that the general public who has now become a part of, <laughs> of this issue in the Amy Church perceives it as we are trying to fall in line with other mainline denominations who have already um, gone this way. They've already breached this area, the Episcopal Church, the United Methodist Church, which we are in full communion. And they're saying, well, we're simply just doing the black version of them now. And I, I beg to differ that that's the case, but how should we, um, how should we, present this to not just our our Zion, our communion, but the other communions as our way of being independent in our approach to it, our way of being independent in our practices of it. What do you suggest that we do? Uh, because there will be people who will probably, those there, there have been people who have left the church because of this issue, and there probably be people who will leave the church because of this issue what do you, what is something that you would suggest as a as a uh 
a woman of faith, a person of faith, and as a, a uh, thought leader in this specific area. What is it? Yeah, so I, 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 I appreciate the question uh, because um, one of the things that we must begin to acknowledge is that this is our community, this is our people, this is our issue. Um, uh, white folks, European folks have not made us gay. <laughs> um, those of us who are black and LG, part of the LGBT community um, uh, have, have not been um, um, nurtured into or, uh, or natured into uh, who we are as sexual beings um, because of, um, of white culture. Um, there have been multiple forms of, um, of, um, of sexuality that date back to more ancient times in, on, on the continent. Uh, we can see not only um, uh, forms of, um, of, uh, of polygamy or polyamory where men have had multiple wives or in some cases, cases uh, wives have, uh, wives have had multiple husbands mm -hmm. <laughs> um but we've also seen uh boy wives <laughs> yes. um, and um and other forms of um uh, gatekeepers if you will of the culture um as uh the somes um uh have described in in cultures in burkina faso for instance right um there there are um there are evidences that uh, that our sexuality is not um, simply a product of uh, westernization. That said, our sexuality has been a target of um, of enslavement, and so um, there there is evidence of um, black uh, male slaves um, being used by uh, white slave masters um, uh, to. Uh, learn how to have heterosexual sex, <laughs> um, uh, violences and abuses um, that are unspeakable uh, in terms of the ways that our, uh, our sexuality has been, um, has been targeted, where uh, men have been um, uh, um, uh, emasculated or, <laughs> um, or cast as mendingo men, uh, where women have been um, hypersexualized uh, or uh, cast as mammy, <laughs> uh, who is completely asexual. Um, our, our sexuality has been the target. Uh, all that uh, notwithstanding, um, we are a self-determined and a self-determining people. As African Methodists, we would not be if we were not um, if we were not committed to our own independence, committed to um, to the value of our personhood, the dignity of our personhood, and our minds, bodies, and souls. Um, so, all that said, at the heart of this uh, committee is us hearing from us. Um, testimonials of Black LGBTQ people uh, who are part of the AME Church and those who are um, outside of the AME Church, maybe some who have left the AME Church, um, uh, maybe some who have the certain freedoms of, of not having been a part ever of the AME Church. Uh, but these are those uh, from whom and um, with whom we will be listening. And um, and, and to me, that makes it our own. <laughs> I think that there is a deeper and a different conversation about um, what um, what um, sexism and heterosexism mean and how uh, these uh, violences impact other communities around the world. Um, perhaps communities beyond those of African descent. And, and maybe there will be a time for us to think on that <laughs> directly. But for now, we're talking about our own. We're talking with our own. 
and we're we're talking amongst ourselves about what we need and who we are and what we believe and so to me that makes this process very much ours um the the the, the question of hermeneutics begins with how do we as ames read a bible that justifies slavery and still want to talk about <laughs> um uh, a kind of fundamentalism with respect to uh, a contemporary application of the Bible. How do we as AMEs who um, who have promoted uh, Jarena Lee mm -hmm. uh, with with uh, with the blessing of ordination <laughs> um, post uh, uh, posthumously? Um, how how do we uh, square women be silent in the church? <laughs> um, uh, we. We, we know these texts, we know they're there, but we have a way of interpreting the Bible uh, that does not take away from our faith or our faithfulness, nor our discipleship of Jesus Christ. Um, and yet we are able to affirm one another in our gifts. Um, and so, you know, um, I, I think that, that most importantly, uh, we, we have to um, just, uh, be um be steady <laughs> and be true and um and and listen to one another carefully um and and don't let the lie be told nor let it be spread um that that we are doing this because of what white people are doing <laughs> or because of what other communions or denominations have done um <laughs> this is real for us <laughs> um and uh and and we are impacted um we are a part of the community and have been for a long time uh quiet as it's kept there have been a lot of people uh who um who lived with their you know significant other and called it their friend or their cousin or their something <laughs> um and and who are part of the ame church uh for many many and long years um, but because of the nomenclature of this present day, um, in, in large part, and the politics around sexuality, that was not necessarily something that was was discussed. This is um, this is a new day, and uh, and um, and 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 I think there's a call and a draw to live with um, with dig with dignity and um, and to and to live um, free and open about who we really are with integrity. I absolutely agree with that. And my phone rang. <laughs> Just threw all that up. Oh, anyway, but um, I really appreciate you being uh, on the show and having this dialogue. I, it is my hope that this dialogue on discernment, or this committee on discernment, uh, really explores deeply the impact that this will have on our Zion not considering not weighing anybody else you know they are already doing what they're doing <laughs> i believe we have been in our church that has always had the heart of god and the people of god at its center and i hope that this issue will be one that furthers the efforts and and the vision that richard allen had for this church Having said all that, I still am concerned <laughs> because, you know, this this is one of the most uh, riveting issues I'm sure this church has ever faced in a very long time. So I, I do hope that we we will follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit as it as it takes us in this new direction, however it may do. But um, do you have any closing remarks or anything that you want to say? Uh, uh, by, by the way, uh, people want to get in touch contact with you for for questions about sexual ethics not anything else uh how would they get in touch with you uh well i i can i can be reached um on uh twitter at jennifer s leith l-e-a-t-h um j-e-n-n-i-f-e-r um and um i i can also be reached uh, on facebook at uh, jennifer .leith. And um, I, I really just appreciate the opportunity uh, to to be with you. Um, these matters are not are not easy, but um, but 
I would say that, you know, we must pray. Uh, we must pray without ceasing. Um, and we must remember that we are praying for people who are discerning their sexuality, families who are broken uh, because a, a loved one has taken their life um, after not feeling support uh, on account of uh, their sexuality. Um, we are praying with people um, who are um, who are trying to figure out how to live with integrity, who don't want to live in a closet. Um, we are we are praying with people um, who are parents who have to make a decision about uh, the gender of their child uh, when their child's um, uh, sexual organs don't present clearly as male or female uh, upon birth. We're, we're praying with people and we, we must pray all together. God uh, indeed um, has made us all and created us all in God's image. And so uh, we also have to remember that this is family. This is a family matter. And we are family to one another uh, and that we all have family. Um, yours might not be my story, but I, I guarantee you there's somebody in your family who has a story like mine. <laughs> um, and, um, and just know that uh, you don't need an excuse to love your family. Um, and we are all God's children uh, and God calls us to love. And, um, and as we love and as we think about, well, what are the limits or the parameters of my love or of our love one for another? We ought to remember, um, we do unto others as we would have them do unto you. So if you, you'd want to marry the one you love, uh, think about that <laughs> um, as you're thinking about how to love others who might uh, be married differently than you. Um, I, I think that the, these are these are the kinds of things that we just need to um, remember as family matters, as matters for prayer, um, and uh, as matters um, all of which we take before God uh, in humble submission to God's um, divine will and purpose. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. Leith. It's been an honor. And um, make sure all of you who are watching that you would like and subscribe and all that other stuff that you're supposed to be doing. And um, we appreciate you so much.